In today's video, we will look at Home Assistant's latest dashboard feature, Sections. I will show how to go from empty to first section to somewhat full dashboard, how various cards perform in sections, what are the limitations, is it worth it, and what does it all mean? Now let's dive in. To create the page with new sections functionality, you click the plus sign, come up with the title, icon, and the rest. Then you need to choose sections. You can see it's called out as experimental, but that's natural for a new feature like that. Now we got our sections page. It shows us a first untitled section and gives you an option to create another one. Let's name the section. The good news that you'll see later in the video is that you can add emojis to make it a little more visual rather than just pure text. There are a couple of ways of adding various entities and tiles. You can either go one by one choosing a specific card or you can go by entity and maybe you want to search a specific room and decide then what you want to add. Let's add a light humidity sensor, temperature sensor, and the window sensor. Here we go. Um, now we can move things around so it looks a bit better. Temperature sensor here, humidity sensor there, and window sensor. Happy days, we have our first section done. The, the key limitation now is that you can only place two tiles per section row. It will not let you have more than two. As a matter of fact, if you go into different types of cards and may only be able to place one per row. So, for example, an alarm card will cover the entire row. Same for the gauge. With the button card, you can place two. But guess what? You can only put a single light card per row. Same with thermostat, which is quite gigantic if you ask me. And same for the weather forecast card. Essentially, only tile and button cards will let you place more than one per row. This is a limitation of the first version, and I hope it will be addressed later. The only concern I have is that it may have been implemented to ensure it works smoothly across screen sizes. You can create up to four sections side by side. If you try to create a fifth one, it will be pushed below the first and so on. Now let's turn over the one I've created. We've got four rooms here. As promised, here is the emoji usage. You can just copy paste it from any website which hosts an emoji library. Now all tiles are easily controllable. You can add a navigate button to go to another page. There are a couple of ways you add additional sections. The first one is pretty obvious. You just create them individually. Alternatively, you can go the old school and coding way by clicking the raw configuration editor. Here, you can pick a single section, say this one, starting with type and ending with title, copy paste it. Here we go, and now we will have another section in our main dashboard. This way may be easier if you've been naming your sensors or other entities consistently. All you need to do is to replace a room name, in this example, king to another room name, princess. When finished, click save. It will tell you that it's not the way to do it anymore. Oh, well, why not? As intended, it is now showing princess related entities, so all works. Where the actual drag and drop comes into play is when you need to move things around. You can do it any way you wish, really. It takes two seconds. When I first tried sections, was able to grab this view within literally less than five minutes. It would have taken way, way longer to achieve the same result. You'd have to install hacks, find additional cards, add them, program them, and more. These new sections work right out of the box. Yes, they are not as customizable, probably never will be as customizable. But this is a light year's leap forward. Everything is immediately controllable. So speed and convenience has been achieved successfully. The main challenge in my view is that you can only have two tiles in a single section row, which is a bit of a problem. It leaves a lot of empty space. You can see it more clearly on a smartphone. It just about fits two sections, meaning you are stuck with two titles and 12 tiles. This is not quite enough. That means you will have to start scrolling, and I don't think scrolling is a good user experience. Otherwise, the mobile version works well. Everything is clickable. You can see the data. You can edit the dashboard, move things around, add cards. All works, but I think it's a little bit too much white space. Hopefully, going forward, they can offer some cards more, more functionality or maybe theme functionality, which will allow you to change the boundaries. But for now, this is what it looks like. The second negative is the fact that it's not a complete drag and drop. Everything is still stuck to some form of grid. There is no full freedom of movement. I am sure this is something that will be addressed in the future releases and will get better. 
Finally, only two types of cards allow for more than a single card in a row. None of the mushroom cards will work. Not even chips, although with those I guess you can fill up space nicely. Will I use it? Not yet. It still lacks the customization. But I think the Home Assistant team is onto something real special here. It is super convenient. It is super quick. For anyone just starting with Home Assistant, this will be way easier than the old way, when everything is all over the place and a bit of a mess. It will allow for quick zoning, which is probably what most people do with their smart home dashboards. And here you have it, Home Assistant Sections, a quick and easy way to create zoned dashboards that's clearly still in early phases. Will you use it now or wait? Let me know in the comments.